And so today's video is about the quiz for 5.09 on vectors. And so this quiz has six total questions. And of those six questions, um, uh, two or three of them are about finding the component vector. So we're going to find component vectors from a couple of standpoints. And then one is about a transformation matrix. So that'll be a multiplication problem. And with vectors. And then um, finally, oh, uh, two of the problems are about adding vectors geometrically. So you want to do the head to tail method, head to tail or the parallelogram method. And we'll go over those. So that's about five questions. And then the last question is the first one. That's probably the hardest one, but they'll give you a bearing and they'll give you a time and they'll give you a rate and from there, you're supposed to uh, fill out six blanks, all right? So those are the six questions we have to do. A couple of repeats in there, but let's go ahead and do those right now. So the first thing I want to do is component vectors. And... Uh, the way they do this is they will give you a point A, say like um, uh, negative 3, 4, and a point B, say like um, 6, 2. And they will say like A is the initial point and B is the terminal point. And so they want you to write essentially the position or component vector, which is what's the vector that has same size, same magnitude, and same direction, but its initial point is zero, zero, okay? That's essentially what they're asking you to do. So all you have to do is recognize that geometrically uh, negative three fours like here, six twos like here. And so you're trying to find the vector here like that. And so uh, in order to do that, all you have to do is um, uh, add um, components. All right, or excuse me, subtract components. I'm sorry. So you subtract uh, corresponding x and y values. All right. And so from the terminal point, so we do the x's first, and this is now a vector. So we'll go 6 minus a negative 3, and then we'll do 2 minus a 4. So it's always terminal minus initial point, and that gives us a vector. 6 minus a negative 3 is 6 plus 3, 9, and then negative 2. And if you look, this vector looks approximately like 9, negative 2. Okay, that's all you have to do for that type of problem. Let's go to the next one. The next component form vector is you want to find something like 2 times vector b plus 
um, 4 times vector a. And so in this case, let's make uh, vector a, let's uh, make that um, 3, negative 1, and let's make vector b um, equal to negative 2, 4. All right. And so this is scalar multiplication and then addition of vectors. So um, 2 vector b plus 4 vector a is going to equal 2 times the component form of vector b plus 4 times the component form of vector a. So in this case, we do scalar multiplication first. And we end up with negative 4, 8, all right, plus 12, negative 4. And then we can add those. And so we get negative 4 plus 12. And then we get 8 <coughs> plus negative 4. All right, adding them component-wise, right? And then that is equal to 8, 4. So there's our resultant vector. Okay, so those are the two component form type problems that you're going to encounter. So the next one, let's continue this here. Uh, and let's use these two vectors. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to add them by head to tail method or parallelogram method. So this is geometric. And the best way to do this problem is to do it on graph paper, and then you're going to draw it, OK? So um, let's take um, our vector a, which is 3, negative 1. And our vector b, which is negative 2, 4. And all we want to do is we want to find a plus b, um, which is equal to 3, negative 1, plus negative 2, 4, which is equal to 1, 3. Um, all we want to do is add this geometrically, all right? So head-to-tail method, how are we going to do that? So head-to-tail, we go 1, 2, 3, negative 1. So we graph that vector, 3, negative 1. And then from there, we go negative 2. So this acts like a new origin. That's the way I always like to say it. It acts like a new origin. So I'll draw it in with dotted lines. And in this case, we want to go negative 2, 4. So we're going to go over negative 2. And then we're going to go up 4. So there's the point that we're adding. All right, and that, so we go head to tail, right? Take the head of the first vector, which is this, uh, excuse me, take the head of the first vector, which is this point, and then, the, and then the tail of the second vector and attach it there, and then pretend you have a new graph and count it out, and that's your result. And then what you do at this point is you connect those. This is your solution. And if you look at it, that solution is the vector 1, 3. Okay? And so you're going to be drawing these vectors and then drawing the solution. So make sure the arrows point in the correct direction when you do that, and you should be okay. So let's look at the parallelogram method of adding vectors. So we're going to add the same two vectors, 3, negative 1, and 2, 4. But now we're going to do the parallelogram method, OK? 
And so one, two, three. Okay. So what I do in this case is I do the first vector, um, three, negative one. So I end up right there and I draw that vector. Okay. Now I want to um, draw the second vector, which is negative 2, 4. So negative 2, 4 is right here. Okay. So what we do, so there's our first, there's our two vectors. So what we do is we can do um, a 3, negative 1. In other words, we do a 3, negative 1 from that point. And from this point, we do a negative 2, 4. So once I do that, you can see I have created a parallelogram. And so at this point, all I need to do is connect right there. And so you see I am at 1, 3 as well. That's the vector 1, 3. So that's how you do it. So draw the two vectors, position vectors, and then you draw parallel ones to the opposite two sides. Once you do that, then you go back to the origin and connect the opposite diagonal. And that will be your parallelogram method. So those are the two methods, head to tail and parallelogram. Both are very similar um, and both give you the correct answer. So that's the geometry. Let's go to the next slide. So our fifth problem is the transformation matrix problem. Now, if you're given a transformation matrix, say matrix B equal to 1, 2, negative 3, um, negative 1, something like that, okay, and you're given a matrix A, say um, 5, negative 2, Okay, then uh, if you want to see how it's transformed, then you want to multiply those. Now, just so you know, you could take the matrix, or excuse me, the transformation matrix B, it's not a vector, I apologize, and take 1, 2, and multiply it times... So this is a 1 by 2, and then we're going to multiply it times the uh, 2 by 1 matrix, okay? 5, negative 2, all right? And these are compatible, and when you do that, you're going to get um, 1 times 5, plus 2 times negative 2, and um, negative 3 times 5, plus negative 1 times negative 2. Okay, so you multiply by component-wise, and then you add them, and you will end up with the vector 5 minus 4, 1, negative 15, plus 2, negative 13. Okay, now, just so you know, they could write, write the vector A, they could write it as a row vector, like 5, negative 2, like this, and then they could write the transformation matrix exactly the same way. Now, in this case, this is a 2 column by 1 row, 
Okay? And this then, one row, excuse me, it's one row by two columns. And then this is a two by two, and they're still compatible if you write it this way. But when you multiply it, let's do that. It'll look a little different if we have our vector times our like this. Now we're going to end up with a 1 by 2. So what happens? Okay, so we take 5 negative 2 times the columns, each column. So it would be 5 times 1 plus negative 2 times negative 3. All right, and then we'll have 5 times 2 plus negative 2 times negative 1. Okay, all right, and that's the multiplication. And now let's see what the result is. And when we do that, we get 5 plus 6, negative 2 times, which is 11, and then we get 10 plus 2, which is 12. And so you'll notice that because of the multiplication, because it's rows times columns, that depending on how they give you the information... Hang on a sec. So I wanted to look at something to make sure. Now, you might expect, because commutative always works, that these would be the same. And so you have to be very careful. I do not like how they wrote things in your book or on the quiz. And let me show you why, okay, um, so that you can be aware of this. The question becomes, which one of these is then right? That, that seems like a reasonable question to ask. And I'll tell you, the first one is right. We take the transformation matrix times the vector. And so, in the problem, they give you a problem like this. 5, negative 3, and then they give you the transformation matrix... 7, 3, negative 6, negative 4. This is actually one of the problems from the quiz. Now, when I multiply these, I got to make sure I get them in the correct order. If I do it like this, then I'm in the wrong order, okay? But here's the problem. It, you'll notice when I do transformation matrix times a column matrix of the vector... I get a column matrix. But their answer is a row matrix. Like this. So for this problem, I would put 1, negative 13. Okay? Don't multiply it backwards and then get the 11, 12. They really don't want you to do that, even though it's possible. But the transformation is always we want to transform the vector, not take the vector and swap it around. It, and, and this has to do with matrix algebra and the fact that matrix algebra is not commutative when you multiply. It causes all kinds of issues. So it's very, very important that when you multiply these, you don't put them in the order that they gave to you, you do it like I've done it right here. And that'll really help you on that problem if it's one that you've missed. Okay, let's go to the last problem. Okay, the very last problem looks like this. All right, it, it'll give you a bearing. It'll give you an average speed of a boat, of a car, of whatever. It'll tell you what time 
that the object leaves. So in our case, we're leaving at midnight. And then it'll say something like you travel until 4 a.m. or 4 p.m. or whatever. So what you have to do is you take these two things and you say total time is four hours. Okay? Total time is four hours. All right? Then we have to take our vector, okay? I, I would just keep this in mind. Just get your total time down so you know what it is. Now, here's how the blanks look. It says the component form of the vector at 4 a.m. So we want to find component form of vector at 4 a.m. So that's a blank. It'll be, uh, it'll have a blank one and it'll have a blank two. Basically, we're trying to write the component form of the vector. This is blank one, this is blank two, okay? Then it'll say, Uh, the vehicle, ship, airplane, or whatever is about blank miles to the <coughs> blank. And so my guess is you would put north or south here and about blank miles to the blank six, and I would guess this is east or west, of where ship left, okay? Okay, so that's kind of the total problem. So let's shrink that down and then we'll kind of draw it out. So when I start, I always start at the ocean, or <laughs> ocean, the origin, <laughs> sorry about that. So I would start at the origin, and then I have a bearing of 225 degrees. So 225 is this way, all right? And I have a speed of 50 miles per hour, okay? So this is what I'm looking at. Okay, 225 degrees, 50 miles an hour. Okay, and we're going to leave at midnight and travel till 4 a.m. Okay, so let's look at the whole problem. And so, as I told you guys in class today, I am messing up the whole bearing thing. All right. So here's the questions we have to answer, but let me fix the bearing thing, okay? Let, let me fix that. How do you find a bearing? All right, so in this problem, our bearing is 225 degrees. Bearings are always figured from true and clockwise, okay? True north and clockwise. So 225 degrees, here's 90 degrees, here's 180, so 270 to the next line, 
So 225 is in there somewhere. So this is where our vector is. Now notice how we went from true north and not from the x-axis or east like we normally do for trig. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. Now, here comes the other problem, okay? What would this angle be if you figured it in trig, okay? Well, in trig, this angle would be 90, 90, all right? And then um, on the back side, we had 90 and 225 was 45. So this 45. So it turns out that true north and clockwise for this angle the trig angle theta is also 225 degrees. This is the only angle that a bearing and the trig angle are the same. So notice my bearing's in green, my trig angle is in white. This is the only angle where they are the same measurement. So this is kind of an accident of my choice. So let's finish the problem, okay? So we now know the bearing uh, gives us a trig angle of 225. We know the average speed is 50 miles an hour. They left at midnight, but they go till 4 a.m. So they go for four hours. So the magnitude... is 50 times 4, or 200 miles. So it's 50 miles per hour times 4 hours. Hours cancel, so the magnitude is 200 miles. So this vector, as a magnitude vector, is 200. And the angle theta, now notice the trig angle theta, is 225 degrees. So this is our vector where we give it as a magnitude of the vector theta, all right? So we now have the magnitude and the theta for our vector. So now we can find the component form. What's the component form? The component form is um, magnitude of the vector cosine theta, trig angle, magnitude of the vector, sine theta. Remember, that's our conversion. So we can do that. Our magnitude is 200, cosine 225 degrees, and then 200, sine 225 degrees. So I then grab my calculator, make sure I am in degree mode, and I multiply this out. So 200 cosine 225. And that gives me negative 141 miles for the x value. And 200 sine 225. Which is also negative 100 and 41 miles for the x value. So now I can answer this question. If we go back, once I've got this, I can answer the question. So what's the component form of the vector? Well, it's negative 141, negative 141, all right? The vehicle um, is about 141 miles to the north or south, east or west, depending on the choices. So I'll say south, right? Because it's the y value is 141 miles south and about 141 miles 
to the west. And that's how you fill these out. So let's do another problem, okay? So I have the same background. So let's have a bearing of 310 degrees um, where our average speed is um, uh, 15 miles per hour and we leave at midnight and we go till, um, let's go to 30 a.m. All right. So our total time is two and a half hours. All right. And now we want to do this problem. So I want to do the bearing angle calculation. Okay. So our, our bearing is 310 degrees. So I go 90, 90, 90, that's 270. And then I go 40 more degrees. So this is 40 right here. So our vector is here in quadrant two. Now, what theta is that? So now I want to find the theta, the trig angle that matches with that. So as you can see, I go 90. Since this is 40 here, I know this part is 50. So our angle, our theta is 140 degrees. Okay, our magnitude is 15 miles per hour times two and a half hours. So that'll be 30 and 7.5. So 37.5 miles. Okay, that's our magnitude. So now we can write the vector in trig form. So uh, magnitude of my vector, okay, theta is going to equal 37.5, 140 degrees, okay? Then I want to convert that to um, magnitude of the vector cosine theta and magnitude of the vector sine theta. Those will be my x, y's. So in this case, it'll be 37.5 cosine 140. Now notice, my bearing's 310, but the trig angle is 140. It's the trig angle I put into the equation. And then I have 37.5 sine of 140. All right? And so that will equal my vector. So I want to do that calculation. This time I'll show you on the Desmos calculator for fun. All right? And so we do... 37.5 times the cosine of 140 degrees. Now, I check my mode, see, radian mode, degree mode, and I get negative 28.72 is the x value, and then I do 37.5 sine of 140, in degree mode, and I get 24.1. So basically, negative 29 and 24 are x, y values. And there's my calculations on Desmos. So the x value was negative 29, and then 24 was the y value. That makes sense. We would, if you look at this, we would go negative number and then a positive number to get to the vector. So those are approximately the x, y coordinates. 
So I'm comfortable that I have done this correctly. So now I want to fill in their answers. So negative 29, 24, all right, is the component form of the vector at, uh, in this case, 2.30 a.m. The vehicle is about blank miles, so the x, this would be west, negative 29 miles to the west of where it started, and about 24 miles to the north. And so what they're doing, uh, I was wrong on what goes in these boxes. They're doing east-west first and north-south second. Why? Because you do the x-coordinate first and then the y-coordinate second. And x's are east-west and y's are north-south. Okay? So this is now a corrected video. You know how to do bearing and find the trig angle, and you now know how to fill out their answers so you can get it correct. Alrighty, all done. Good luck.